So S corps, and uh, then we'll look at C corps as as a uh, final entity. So just a couple more entities here. S corporations are more expensive to set up and maintain uh, versus LLCs. You've got annual registration fees. You've got state taxes. Uh, you know, just looking at California, they've got a, a one and a half percent tax on profits and an eight hundred dollar minimum franchise tax, which I, I mentioned earlier. Um, S corps are pass through entities, so profit and losses will pass through on a K one, uh, and they'll show up on that Schedule E again. Get to know those Schedule E's. Um, they'll actually show up on on a Schedule E. You've got to file Form 1120S. It's an informational return, but it is due by March 15th. So if you have an S corp and you haven't filed yet, uh, make sure you at least get an extension filed by March 15th, so you don't rack up any penalties there. Um, and the 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 uh, preferential way to generate uh, earned income out of an S corp is is through payroll taxes. And again, with payroll taxes, it's a little bit more expensive because you're going to have uh, uh, other other expenses centered around payroll that you're going to have to incur. It's not as easy as as the other entities. C corporations. Um, C corporations are not the preferential choice for a trading business, and, and, and there's, there's three predominant reasons that I've, I've listed up here. Um, number one is double taxation of earnings. Uh, C corps get taxed at the corporate level, and, uh, and then when you, you, know, you pull money out of that C corp, it's, you're taxed on, on that business as well, or you're taxed on that, that income as well. Um, losses are trapped in the entity, and they're not passed through. So if you are generating trading losses, it stays inside of that entity and doesn't pass over into your personal return, uh, which is no good. And then finally, uh, there's no 60-40 tax treatment for, uh, for futures trades. So again, a, a profitable future trader uh, would be absolutely crazy to, uh, to set up a C-Corp for, uh, for their trading business. Um, the one thing that I see C corps that they are good for is they they by far and away provide the best fringe benefit plans. Um, you've got um, medical reimbursement plans that can be set up through C-Corps, uh, which will pay for uh, medical costs not covered by insurance. So any out-of-pocket medical costs can be covered fully uh, through your corporation, uh, which is nice. And it's obviously better than taking the expenses on a, on a Schedule A and, and being subject to the 7.5% of HEI. It's a much better plan than that. There's, uh, there's actually uh, commuter reimbursement plans. So if you had a C-Corp, you could actually, if you live in, in Chicago or New York or some Somewhere that has a, uh, a subway or an L train, you know, you can pay, or, or if you take the bus to work or something like that, you can actually uh, pay yourself. Uh, I believe it's 120 or 140 bucks a month that you can uh, you can get commuter expenses from uh, and parking expenses too from from a C corp. So they've got a lot more perks on the fringe benefit plan side. So if that's something that you need, you know, medical reimbursement plans, things like that, then you know, a, a, one of the strategies that you can utilize is a dual entity structure and. And, and you know, paying that admin fee out into the C corp, uh, and that way you're able to fund those medical reimbursement plans and things like that. So it is possible to still take advantage of a C corp, but for just a pure trading business, it doesn't make sense because of the, the restrictions that I talked about uh, right there. So some cautions for entities. Um, an entity does not fix everything. So just just because you formed an entity, uh, don't neglect the other four things the IRS looks for in traders. And and again, you know, harping back on frequency, uh, dollar volumes, time spent, and, and and intent to to earn a living. Um, don't overlook those things. You know, just because you have this entity structure doesn't mean the IRS is, is not going to look at that stuff. So you've you got to trade frequently uh, and consistently. I, I think I, I should have added consistently there. You can't trade one month and, and take a trade one week and, and, and a month or two months later take another trade. You're going to have to trade consistently in order to still qualify uh, as a trading entity. Okay, So that's, that's one of the things I would definitely caution you on. The other one is, is um, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of, of the webinar to treat this as a business, and, and what that means is, you know, one of the things that any business owner has is, is they've got separate checking. Um, so if you set an entity up, uh, you, you need to go open a, a business checking account and, and use that to pay for your trading expenses. Keep those things separate. Um, 
you know that's the way that you need to maintain good books and records is is to make sure that you have separated those those business assets from your personal assets and your your business checking from your personal checking. Uh, definitely do that. And in, in in some cases, it may be a, a negligible expense to do this, but again, it strengthens your your case that this is a a legitimate business. Um, also, put your trading accounts into the name of your business. Uh, I've seen before where you know people have set up um, LLCs or they've set up an S corp, but they have the the uh, trade accounts as an individual or joint. And again, um, the IRS catches that. It's 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 never a problem until you get caught, right? And if the IRS does catch that, you're going to lose your trader status. Uh, 2008, an LLC lost trader status because they trading accounts were listed as individual ownership. Uh, they didn't have them listed under the name of the LLC. So you got to make that uh, transition. If you set the business up, transfer the accounts or or recode the accounts uh, as uh, as you know the name of the business. So let's look at uh, home office deduction. I think we're getting very close to being uh, wrapping this thing up, and then we'll be able to take some questions here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to talk about the home office deduction because I, that's an area that a lot of people get confused about. Um, so the deduction, uh, I talked about this earlier, deduction cannot be more than your business net income. So, you know, if you generate, uh, you know, $100 in, in income uh, on your business, and this is, is regardless of your trading business, but let's just say that you've got another business and you're trying to take a home office deduction, but if you generate $100 in revenue in that business, your home office deduction cannot be more than $100. Anything greater would be carried forward to future years, but uh, you're not going to take a, a $4,000 home office deduction on a, on a $100 of, of, uh, of revenue for your business. IRS obviously isn't going to let that happen. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, you calculate the deduction on Form 8829, and you take that deduction on your Schedule C. One important thing for uh, traders who maybe rent, uh, if you rent, you're in an apartment, a townhouse, or if you're in a house that you rent, you can still take a home office deduction. Um, so don't think because you don't own a home that you can't take this deduction. That is not true. You can take it even if you rent. Um, you're going to take direct expenses. These are 100% deduction for anything spent just for the home office. So if you decorate your home office, if you do repairs, put in floors in your home office, uh, built-ins, built you, build in, uh, uh, you build in bookcases, desks, et cetera, anything like that, that's 100% deduction for the home office. Indirect expenses, you take a pro rata share of. Uh, which is utilities, you know, your utilities for your house, repairs on your home, uh, maintenance, insurance, you know, taxes, etc. Uh, one of the things I should have put up here was security system. So if you've got a security system for your home, you take a pro rata of that. What pro rata means? And again, this is going to be the case if you rent or, or um, whether you own the home. Uh, pro rata means that you, you look at the square footage of your home office, and, uh, and let's say it's 200 square feet, and uh, let's say you've got a 2,000 square foot apartment or a 2,000 square foot home. I love keeping my math simple, by the way. That means you're taking 10%. That's pro rata. Um, so you take 10% of all your utility expenses, 10% of the repairs, 10% of the maintenance, et cetera, et cetera, that you take as a home office deduction. LLCs, partnerships, S-Corps, you're considered um, owner employees, so you're not really filing the Schedule C. So the, the way that the, it happens for a partnership or an S-Corp or an LLC is you can still take the home office deduction, but it shows up as an unreimbursed employee expense. And it's going to be uh, claimed on your Schedule A, and it's, again, subject to that 2% uh, floor. So the first 2% you can basically uh, throw away because you're not going to get any deductions for that. But if, if the home office expense is greater than 2%, you'll take the amount off your taxes that's greater than 2%. Now the way that you can fix this, excuse me, um, my voice is hanging in there pretty nicely by the way I should say, but the way that you fix that and, and, and get away from that Schedule A 
And the preferred way that, that we would do it at, at uh, Straight My Taxes is what's called an accountable plan. And this only works if, if you've got an LLC or a partnership or an S-Corp. It's going to be a written corporate resolution. So you've got to write this into your, your uh, partnership docs or your, your uh, S-Corp docs, anything like that. It's a written corporate resolution and that you reimburse yourself for business use of the home. Now what we do is, is we look at the 8829, we calculate the deduction on a monthly basis, um, and we, we fill out the 8829 for your records. Um, you know, that, that you keep in your files for your records, and you make that adjustment in your books every month. But what you're in essence doing is reimbursing yourself uh, for your quote unquote out-of-pocket expenses for business use of your home. Um, you will not take uh, depreciation, which I'll, I'll come back and talk about that here in, in a second. So let me make a little note here, put a little thumbtack up and, and come back and talk about depreciation. But um, you won't take depreciation, but you'll take the other expenses, the direct and the indirect expenses uh, for business use of the home. And again, that works even if the home or is rented or you're in an apartment, et cetera. You can still utilize that accountable plan in order to, to uh, uh, take the deduction for um, the uh, business use of your home. So the, the business actually deducts it as a business expense, and it's not taxed to the owner um, because it's a reimbursement, so it's not counted as income. So there's no taxable event or no taxable consequence to the owner, uh, but you are able to take that business expense as an LLC partnership or an S corp. Okay. Um, the depreciation. I meant to. Uh, I should have put that on here. But part of the home office deduction is you are taking. I don't think I put it on here. Yeah. Uh, part of the home office deduction is you're, you're actually taking some depreciation um, in your home office. So beyond the direct and indirect expenses, there's also going to be a section on the 8829 that you're taking depreciation of your home for your home office. And the, the problem that some accountants out there will have with, with that is that uh, you have to keep good records of that depreciation uh, because it, it actually gets added back in when you sell your home and you, ha you can have potential gains on the depreciation aspect of that because you've taken the home office deduction. So just make sure you keep good records of the uh, 8829s um, for when you do sell your house. But you can get around that through the entity structure by, by uh, using the accountable plan that I talked about because you're not going to look at depreciation so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> so what to do next? Um, it's uh, you know fill out and submit the, the trader evaluation form if if you uh, you know haven't done that already and you're curious about whether you qualify for trader status or not. I would I would definitely fill that out, send that in to me, and uh, we'll be happy to review your situation and get back with you. Um, it's not too late to claim trader tax status. Uh, you know, you can do that on a Schedule C. So even if you already filed your taxes and you didn't claim trader status uh, for this year, we can go back and do an amended return and, uh, and, and be able to take some, some additional expenses for you. Um, you can also go back and amend the, the last three years if you maintain that activity and qualified. Uh, it makes sense to go back and file amended returns and, and uh, look at trying to get some additional dollars back from, from Uncle Sam. Um, and uh, prepare to make the election for this year, you know, mark the market election and, and, uh, and stuff. So if you haven't done any of that stuff, uh, you, know, you know, definitely look into doing stuff like that. If you've got questions, the uh, email is info at shrinkmytaxes.com. Uh, I welcome any and all questions. Um, so I, I'm, I'm generally very good about getting back to you within, you know, t uh, within uh, 24 hours. Uh, that's our policy. We try to make sure we have an answer for you uh, within that time frame or if I've got to do some homework and some digging, it might take me a little bit longer. But, but we'll definitely answer your email. And uh, let me see, make sure yeah, that's it. Okay. And then how can you know how can we help? What do we do over at uh, at uh, Shrink My Taxes? Um, you know, we do the free trader evaluation. Uh, we can review your previous three years of tax returns for free. So you know, if you do qualify for trader status, we can go back and review your your previous years worth of tax returns and and, and let you know if it makes sense to go back and and do amended returns for those. Uh, we can help you with the mark to market election as far as making the timely election. Uh, you, you know, ma making sure you get the right forms filled out by the right dates. Uh, we can help you with that process. Entity consultation and formation. A lot of these entities uh, depend on your situation and they'll depend on the states because each state has different rules and regulations for the entities. So 
um, you know, we can sit down and, and, and uh, go over what makes the most sense for you and what makes the most sense for, for your situation and advise you on that. And uh, we can also help you form those entities. Um, you know, we can, we can do that for you. Obviously, tax preparation, uh, we handle everything. If it's an S-Corp, LLC partnership, individual joint returns, uh, we can do uh, anything you throw at us, we can definitely handle. And uh, tax planning and, and tax consultation. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I've implemented at Shrink My, My Taxes is that uh, unlimited access included. So if you're working with us, and, you know, whether it's tax preparation or entity uh, formation, things like that, um, we're available um, throughout the year uh, an unlimited amount of time. So if, if you have questions um, or you know, looking for some answers on this or you're thinking about doing certain things and you wanted to see the tax consequences, et cetera, you can email or pick up the phone and call, and uh, the nice thing is, is we don't bill you for that. Um, it's all inclusive, so we, we have an inclusive pricing, and that includes our services and uh, expertise. Uh, so we're, we're definitely there to, to help, and I think most uh, traders appreciate that. You hate, you hate to see people that don't call uh, because they have a question on something because they don't want to get a bill, um, and, uh, and then they end up doing something that messes up their tax situation, and, and so that's why I've implemented that policy. I, I don't like being nickeled and dimed any more than anybody else, so uh, we, we've put that in place so that we're here. Uh, doors always open, if you will, and uh, you can always call us and get a hold of us. And uh, the last quote I had was, uh, which, which again, I, I love Judge Learned Hand. Um, you know, he, he was a, 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 an appeals judge, actually, and uh, he, he never quite made it to the Supreme Court. And uh, from what I've read about the guy, I think it was because of a lot of his you know, outspokenness, uh, if you will, that kept him from making it to the Supreme Court. But uh, he said, in America, there are two tax systems, one for the informed and one for the uninformed. Both systems are legal, and uh, I, I think that's very uh, appropriate for, uh, tra for trader status. You know, people that don't understand it and don't know it, uh, they'll continue to pay higher rates and higher taxes and, and miss out on a lot of deductions. So uh, hopefully uh, we've made you the, uh, the former there, the informed group, and you're able to go out and, and start taking advantage of some of the things that are in place for traders. So I, I think that's it. Um, my contact information I'll leave up here. Um, we've got the 800 number there, my local number, um, the website. You can follow me on Twitter at Shrink My Taxes. Like us on Facebook. Uh, we're all over the social media. Uh, great presentation. 